we bought a bloody camp trailer. And here we are. <laughs> G'day. Here we are on the beautiful Bowen River yet again. I think this is the third time I've come to the Bowen River, but this is a different place this time. So me and Michelle are at private property, um, undecided whether I'll let people know where it is or not. Absolutely beautiful spot. We're camped up literally in the middle of the river um, and there is a bit of a storm brewing, so we should be right though. This, this, this area won't get enough rain to flood us. But um, yeah, literally parked up on the bank. It was a bit of a mission. Uh, got pretty severely bogged, so the tires are down to like 10 pound. Our setup has changed a bit. Um, this is the first time that we've used this setup and um, already it's been a pretty good shakedown and we already know of a few things we have to sort out pronto. But anyway, how good's this spot? Like I said, the, the creek's pretty low, or the river's pretty low, but it's, she's still flowing. There's some nice spots for swimming. So um, there is a crocodile warning before you get in here, but yeah, this if the water's that low, it wouldn't support life of crocodiles. So a couple of really good swimming spots, probably, you know, if we're lucky, chest high, but most of it's about waist high. So um, beautiful, clean water, it's still flowing. So we're in like uh, mid to late November and she's still going pretty good. So I'm not sure what, what um, when this video will go up, that's why I mentioned the time of year. But she's bloody hot one today. We were in the car for about oh, four, four and a half hours from Mackay to get here. So, um, but again, that's because we bought a bloody camp trailer. And here we are. So for me personally, it was a bit of a, um, a, bit of a stressful sort of uh, day for me. Um, I've got no idea how much fuel we use because as a lot of people know with these old Luxies, um, the 03 models and or 97 to 04 I think it is, they have a uh, fuel gauge problem where it doesn't actually read how much fuel you've got left. You've got to sort of um, know what your mileage is. So I know what my mileage is but I've never towed anything before. So yeah, first time towing and um, I've got absolutely no idea. It's sitting on about a third left on the actual gauge, but I'm guessing, so I was getting about 420 fully loaded before. There's bugger all weight in the back of the ute now. I've just got the fridge in there. That's another story, so I'll tell you what's happened today in a minute. A bugger all weight in the back of the ute, and I'm um, towing this camper trailer, which weighs 800 kilos unloaded, and she's got uh, 50 litres of water in it, uh, full fridge. Um, so yeah, she's pr probably weighing in at nearly a tonne. So I'll show you around it, and uh, yeah, we got pretty bogged in here today. Like this sand is so bloody soft in the middle of this creek. But what a beautiful spot. We're getting in there in a minute. Cool off. So here we go. Luxie, the poor old bloody Luxie pulling this thing. Got the solar going. So I haven't uh, managed to put a wire in to charge uh, the camp trailer off an alternator yet. It's got two 130 amp hour batteries. So we should be we should be pretty right. So we got a solar panel on there. So that's the first thing that happened today. So previously, me and my little Irish mate Paulie, we sort of we were sitting there thinking, oh, this isn't the best spot for a uh, solar panel. So I've bought this camper trailer secondhand, um, and this just packs away. And my first thought was, in front of the stone guard, that's uh, that's not really a good spot anyway, for it. We persevered and thought. Oh, well, if someone's put it in front of the stone guard and it's pretty much directly in the back of the, um, in the middle of the back of the car and the back of the car is pretty close to it, it shouldn't get too damaged. But as you can see, she got absolutely smashed. So that's the first thing that went wrong. Second thing that went wrong, these poly block hitches, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. So it's a poly block hitch set up and this week that's the first thing I'm going to try to get on top of. I might get my old mate Tony 
at TJM to sort me out one of those DA35 hitches. Find the pin. So that just sits in the top of it and then it's got this sort of pin that goes through the bottom of it. Anyway, we rocked up here to camp after 150 k's on dirt and mucking around off-road like it's not really decent four-wheel drive tracks. I wasn't actually even in four-wheel drive, but it was still quite testing tracks to get in here to where we are. And um, I've gone to unhitch it and the pin's missing. So it's just blown my mind how that trailer hasn't just unhitched itself from the back of the bloody car. And now I've got to like hunt around and try to find something to sort that out. So I think I've got some fencing wire in the car somewhere. Hopefully I haven't taken it out. It still should be buried in the back there somewhere. So I've got to find it and um, hopefully that'll be enough. Otherwise there's an old homestead up here that had been burnt down and that's got pretty much everything still there. So I might be able to just grab a bit of fencing wire or actually a bit of fence or just something that's gonna fit through there and stop that pin from coming off. So it's a massive rooftop tent on this thing. It's, Michelle had some uh, great dramas with the uh, bedding for it. She went and bought all this king stuff thinking it was king and it's um, bigger than a king. So it's pretty mental space up here. It's got two ladders. I'll just walk up there and show you. Just grab this fly screen. So that's a massive amount of room in there, guys, eh? Like, just huge. We'll probably upgrade this tent. We're actually looking at a 23-0 number that's got some, um, this fancy uh, LST light uh, suppression technology thing going on where it's completely black in here when you zip it up. So it'd be absolutely brewing if you want to sleep in, so. We're looking at one of them, which is relatively the same size, but getting bedding for it, it's a challenge. So, don't know what you do there, but we might, um, yeah, we'll have to research it, but we're thinking about just getting like a king mattress for it and just uh, having a bit of space around the side where you can put like drink bottles or something. But um, yeah, massive tent up top here. First time in a rooftop will be tonight. <laughs> I should mention that it's our Oztrack camper. Oz track. So it's got this little cage up top here where you can store some things, but we've realized on this trip it's absolutely covered in dust. Everything in there was absolutely shattered, just dust all over it, coated. But anyway, we got uh, in here, we got the 130 or the two 130 amp hour batteries. And so uh, the 12 volt in this thing, as I said, I bought it second hand, has been upgraded. So there's been a fair bit of money spent there upgrading the 12 volt system. And um, yeah, basically all runs out of here. Pretty much still stock looking. Um, yeah, but just the, the charger itself, there's an upgraded water pump in there, which flows water a whole lot quicker than the stock one. And um, yeah, basically all operates here. You got your lights, your fridge, all your um, Anderson plugs and SIG plugs and water pump all on separate relays. And you basically can turn the whole, the whole camper trailer off. So that's pretty, um, pretty cool and big circuit breaker. Let you know where your water's at. So, um, so that's all the electronics in there. And it's got some fancy um, battery monitor on the other side. In here, nothing's in there yet. But um, that's probably going to be my space, Michelle reckons. All my clothes and gear and stuff. In here, it's basically shower on the bottom. We'll eventually get like a gas shower thing to heat the water up. And uh, probably a shower en suite coming off the front of it somehow. I'll rig it up. And that's, um, yeah, all well, Michelle's clothes in that um, thing there and a couple of beach towels, etc. So that, that storage thing goes right through. So that's pretty cool. Got a fair bit of dust in here too. These seals don't work too well, as we've just figured out today as well. So anyway, around here, came with a big fridge. Hasn't turned itself off though since running it, so I'm not too sure how efficient it is. We got the freezer on this side and the main fridge on this side. Well, that's how we're running it anyway. And it's a 75 litre Evercool Glacier. So a couple of years old now, it's a bit windy, so I don't know if my voice will come out. But uh, one of the greatest things on this camper trail is this bloody awning. It's a uh, Darchi 270 Eclipse. And it's brilliant, it's got all the walls. So we can totally put this, uh, say hello, Dar. <laughs> we can totally put the walls on and just enclose this whole area which we thought about we might do but as I said that's probably fizzling out 
So yeah, that's like our new setup. It's pretty quick, like overnight, you just have to pull the tent out, all our bedding's in there the whole time. So that's easy as, when we're on the road, just pull up, pull the tent out, go to sleep. If you wanna cook, the kitchen's there. Actually, I haven't shown the kitchen yet, but. But yeah, the whole idea for it's like a base camp. And um, we'll get ourselves, I'll get Michelle a jet bunker or something similar. And when we go to do some more gnarly tracks, we'll just be totally dependent on the vehicle and we'll just be in swags and have the fridge there and have a bit of a quick setup. Now uh, this is the kitchen. Got full working sink here. And a two burner stove. Two burner Dometic or whatever it's called. Yeah, it is Dometic. Dometic. Dometic stove. And like a little cutlery drawer and a little bench there. Whichever way it opens up. There we go. Cutlery fits in there. Nice little prep bench. And obviously that's a nice prep bench as well. All the um, sort of cups and plates and cooking gears all in here. Michelle sorted all that out already. Our pantry in here. Heaps of room, like this is actually quite deep. And uh, yeah, everything in there, like pots and pans, whatnot. It's got these cool doors, which just close like that, but I've got to sort these seals out because there's dust everywhere. And in here's a bit of a miscellaneous scene. It's got cooking utensils, another it. little sink. And it's got this fancy bloody um, battery monitor in there, which is saying it's at 87.1. So she's going down quite significantly. Oh, not really. Oh, it's pretty much since we uh, turned it off the 240 this morning, it's gone down from 100 to 87. So hopefully it lasts the weekend, otherwise we're going to be up shit creek. But anyway, yeah. Bloody butte setup. I nearly went tits up. But um, yeah, as I said, first night tonight on the rooftop, so that'll be interesting. Nice and breezy up in there, so it shouldn't be too uncomfortable at all. Should be actually brilliant. And yeah, but just towing it, it's a whole different experience. Like you do forget it's there, it does tow pretty good. It's got the cheap suspension in it and a lot of people upgrade them. So there's a Lovells kit for, I think it's about eight or $900. Probably look into getting, because it does kind of jolt the car a little bit when there's some significant bumps. Oh, and now the, th the other thing that's happened today, a good old trusty King's fridge been going now for nearly four years it'll be four years in January actually four years January this bloody King's fridge the old uh, Waco model um, yeah doesn't get cold no error light or nothing so all our drinks were in that thought brewing idea put all the drinks in it got here all hot so <laughs> absolutely bloody spewing but anyway if that's the uh, worst thing that happens this weekend aside from like that pin coming out of that um, that hitch it was like it's blown my mind i don't know how that wasn't more catastrophic but anyway i gotta kind of sort that out before we go home so yeah but anyway all in all it's pretty good so we're on the bowen river as i said and yeah we'll just settle into a nice evening tonight got some south african brew horse sausage to put on the snow peak yeah michelle's got the firewood she loves that job she steals it from me though to be honest and now I don't have to get the chainsaw out either, so it's kind of like deflating my ego a little bit. And what do you think so far, Dale? Bowen River's beautiful, can't wait to get in it tomorrow. I'm getting in it tonight, Dale. No, a bit too cold for me now. I'm going to get tomorrow. in right over here, or probably just here now actually, the sun's going down. I did when I was collecting firewood, there's a beautiful waterhole over there by the rocks, so oh, probably right. up to my chest, so that's us tomorrow. Fair enough. In the day, and then in the evening, I think we'll put our chairs probably just over there. It reminds me a little bit of a, a Winyard Creek at Fraser when we had the ocean on one side and the creek on the other. And We've got creek both sides. We have, it's beautiful. We're in the middle of the creek. Let's I, hope it doesn't get a I, big storm somewhere. Hopefully, it doesn't turn into <laughs> shit creek. <laughs> anyway, and yeah, as I said, there's a burnt out, it's burnt out homestead up there on top of the hill. So, we're going to go have a look at that tomorrow, and I'll be actually keeping my eyes peeled for a bit of, uh, bit of something to jam in that pin to keep it in. But anyway, it's blowing blow my mind how that wasn't catastrophic. That could have been an insurance claim on the first ever trip. But anyway, let's get tuck in now, hey Dar. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Hopefully this storm puts on a light show. Haven't seen a decent light show for quite some time. And um, yeah, just bug out the new uh, setup.
Well, we're just about to get dinner going. Fire's cranking. Storm hasn't eventuated. But we're all good. What's for dinner, Dal? I think we've got brewers, um, lamb kebabs, broccoli and lamb, and broccoli and carrots. All cooked on the fire. Oh God, I'm going to cut myself. <laughs> Big catfish. <laughs> it's like a little cod or something. Didn't bring a fishing rod, so I didn't think there'd be much water in here, but um, there's a bit of a deeper hole just here and there's fish swimming everywhere. Even a little turtles down there, waiting for them to pop up again. There's our camp all the way down there. Probably can't see it. Just uh, walk down, pretty much down the water. It's bloody hot, so we're just going to spend most of the day cooling off, I think. And a bit later on, we'll go up and look at the old homestead. It's all burnt down. There's still a lot of stuff around it, though. It just looks like it was burnt down and left there. But yeah, beaut spot, hey, though. Sure is. Oh, a big turtle. Bloody hot day, but anyway, it's about I don't know, what do you reckon, five o'clock ish, four thirty, five o'clock, quarter to five, and uh, we've decided it's cool enough for us to go up to this uh, burnt out old homestead and have a look around. How's this fire pit? The sides of it are like all slotted, must be a bit of old machinery by the looks of it, turned into a fire pit. Pretty cool, old caravan. A chair. A water tank. Can't quite make that one out. ESLH61. Guessing. The old pad for something, probably a toilet block or a shower block, I reckon. And here's a burnt down homestead. Probably snakes everywhere in there somewhere. An old spoon. And a fork. Furnace. Oven, fire extinguisher with bullet holes in it. That's probably why that didn't work. Oh, look, there's an old smashed guitar in here. Looks like it would have been a pretty one. Aboriginal inspired one. Pretty cool. Old fridge. Totally burnt out. It's an old welding rig. That's what all the wire is obviously. So yeah, this must have been like a little workshop. Plenty of tools everywhere. Looks like it'd be pretty decent looking place too, like when it was all up. Good to see photos of it or something. Don't know how that didn't blow up. Mustn't have had anything in it. Oh, wheelbarrow. An 
1987. Ladies' highest start. That's got nothing on it. A little Roby driver. It's about half a dozen old bikes lying around. Some big old pump of some sort. All the hose hanging off the back of it. Last service, 20th, 20th of the 3rd, 02. Yeah. So we're just tucking into our last evening here at, uh, I wasn't going to name the place, but I'll just name it Beckford Station. And um, as I said, private property. And um, we've been privileged enough to be able to stay on the Bowen River in this neck of the woods. And um, yeah, pretty hot bloody day. But um, we've managed to cool off in the many little swimming holes up and down this little stream. Uh, the water levels are quite low, but obviously still flowing. And the water's actually pretty clean, considering like cows obviously come down and it's their drinking source and whatever. But uh, tomorrow we're going home, <laughs> and given the uh, given the muck around we had yesterday, trying to get this car and the trailer in here, we now have to get out. So I'm not really panicking, but I reckon we might have a pretty fun time trying to get out. So yeah, we're going to go back across the stream, which was no problems. But uh, yeah, the camera doesn't really pick it up, but there's probably like a... There's a little hill there, up that little dune, up that next bank, really uh, soft sand. And you've got to power through all the soft sand and get up that dirt hill on the other side there. Not anxious about it, but uh, just kind of want it over and done with, but we're still going to enjoy the rest of the evening. But what a stellar evening it is. Sun's just setting. A few rumbies. Light the fire up in a minute and get to cooking some dinner. Got beautiful, uh, what are they, Dale? Lamb, eh? Got some beautiful lamb kebabs courtesy of Meat Co. Absolutely love that joint. South African bloke, knows his stuff. Knows his jerky, that's for sure. It's all gone, first day in. Actually, no, I finished it today. <laughs> anyway, beautiful evening. 
taking place right now out here on the Bowen River yet again. And we'll get this snow peak cranked up momentarily and get some dinner on. Righto, so I've woken up this morning in a, not too much of a panic, but the uh, water level has actually risen a fair bit, probably half a metre. And it's gone straight across the track over there. So uh, we've packed up pretty much straight away. We're gonna get out of here. There is another option to go that way. I'm not sure about the track though, but uh, back the way we came, yeah, the water's about half a metre deeper. So yeah, super quick pack up. And I've just uh, found a tent peg that has pretty much the right uh, right radius to go straight through that pin. So I'm gonna have to grind off when we get home, but that's gonna hold her in place. Easy. 